Hey, I'm RC, and in this video, we'll talk about the main concept behind creating quests for Ren Engine. So, first of all, what is a quest exactly? Well, it's pretty much anything that has a start and an end. So, it can be a regular quests like you see in most MMOs, such as go kill that monster, explore that cave, go fetch that item. This is the regular type of quest. But in Ren Engine, mini games are also considered quests. So, for example, doing a certain puzzle could be a quest, it could be Minesweeper playing a game of Minesweeper, playing a game of poker, playing a game of Capture the Flag PvP, all those things are considered a quest. So as you can see, pretty much anything is considered a quest in Ringing Chain, and don't forget, sky is the limit. So now let's say that you want to create a quest. So the main core of a quest are its event, and event basically tells the um, game engine what to do Exactly. So it can be displaying a message, teleporting the player, spawning a monster, stuff like that. I will go over all the different things that the event can do later in this video. So having event is great, but you also need to tell the game engine when to trigger those events. And that's where the trigger comes in. So there are many different types of triggers, but the main ones are talking with an NPC, killing an NPC, using an item, and reaching a certain position on the screen. So as you can see, most of the time the trigger will be linked with the NPC, also known as a actor in Raining Chain. And the NPC needs to be located in a certain map. So long story short, you have a map. Inside the map there are NPCs, NPCs have triggers, and if the trigger is met, then the event is called. So for example, in the map town, there is a NPC called Ringo. The NPC Ringo has a trigger, the dialogue trigger set to the event Talk Ringo. And when Talk Ringo is triggered, it will start a dialogue. So I guess I will just shoot a couple more examples. So a player activating a switch, which this is the trigger, could call the event Open the Locked Door, for example. Could be when a player kill a dragon, it will add a dragon add in his inventory. When the player reach position 1010 10 in the map, first town, it could start a certain cutscene. Another very important concept in Raining Chain are the quest variable. So in order to track what um, have been done by the player, so what event he has triggered, you will change his quest variable. So every player has a list of variables that has a unique key and a value. So for example, the key could be um, goblin kill count, and by default the value is zero. When the event kill goblin is triggered, um, it could increase by one the goblin kill count. Another example could be if a door is locked, if you have talked with a certain NPC, if you have reached um, a certain map, stuff like that. So quest variables are very important because it's the only way to track um, the progression in a quest for a player. So now let's do a very simple example. So your quest is to call with the NPC. The NPC asks you to kill a dragon. You kill the dragon and then you talk with the NPC again to receive your reward. So long story short, for this quest, you would have one quest variable, which is if you have killed the dragon or not. So have killed dragon is false by default. There are two events. The first one is talk Ringo, which is linked with the um, dialogue trigger of the NPC Ringo. So what happens when you trigger that event is that if you have not killed the dragon, it will um, start a dialogue where it asks the player to kill the dragon. And if the half kill dragon is true, then it will complete the quest. Now the second event is killing the dragon, called kill dragon, which is linked with the death event of a dragon, and so it's triggered when the dragon dies, and what it will do is that it will set the half kill dragon variable to true. So if you kill it, then you talk with Ringo, it will complete the quest. There is also another type of events in Raining Chain. So, so far we have seen events that actually do something. Now we will see events that return a value. Most of the time you will use that um, type of event when you want to change the visibility of the NPC. So if the event returns true, then the NPC is visible. If the event returns false, then the NPC is invisible. So you can accomplish that by linking that event to the viewed if property of the NPC when you spawn it. So now let's say that you want to create a quest where there is a pad that, are, that is blocked by rocks and you need to activate a switch to destroy the rocks. So 
what you would do is that you would have one quest variable called have destroy rocks, which is by default false. You would have a event called activate switch, which will be tr um, linked with the um, switch trigger of the NPC lever. And when you actually call that Evan, it would set the have destroy rock to true. And finally, you would have a Evan called can see rock, which would be linked with the viewdiff attribute of the NPC rock, those who are blocking the path. So what the event will do is that if the quest variable have explode rock is false, then the event will return true. So the rock will be visible and will be blocking the player. And if the quest variable is um, have explode rock is true, then the event will return false and the rocks will be invisible. So it's very important to understand that no matter what, the rocks will always be there. They will simply not be visible to the player. So in the next episode, what I will be doing is creating a quest from scratch um, using the quest creator. So the quest I will be creating is based on the two examples I've mentioned in this video. So if you want to check it out, then simply click the annotation on the screen. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.